I made a custom turbo manifold using this K20A2 header flipped upside down. I started by cutting the collector off the bottom so I could weld a pipe to it and then I cut all four of the runners so that way I could take them off and flip them upside down. To weld them back on facing upwards, that way the turbo has room to attach. I needed to make a bend so I made some pie cuts with a straight piece of pipe and got them tacked together just like this and set in place to kind of visualize where the turbo is going to sit. I had a friend come over and we were both wearing the least amount of PPE as possible, but we still get the work done safely. So we drilled a hole for my old wastegate setup to weld in right there. Then we can kind of visualize how every things gonna look this is my old wastegate dump pipe kind of lines up well made sure it's all nice and level took the t3 flange bracket and welded that on homeboy's gonna go blind before he turns 25 but there is everything on and welded a custom manifold was fifteen hundred dollars and i made this one for like 20 bucks i thought i might have had this bumper bar you off. You see it bolts straight into the stock location up front and then it has this thin little piece of metal that way the bumper can still go over it and then you're able to easily mount the front mount intercooler right there. But if you see right here I have this big chunky boy which cannot be disassembled at all so in order to replicate this whatsoever I'm probably going to have to cut a lot of this out which is going to be really annoying. And then I also want to add on these little bumper quick release release things. This is what I have for the hood of the car except this one's way smaller that way I can easily take on and off the front bumper since I'm going to be servicing it at the moment I just had a M6 bolt and nut to uh, hold it on but I'm gonna have to add this on somewhere and unfortunately there is no really good spot to do it I could do it here this is kind of flimsy but now I just got to figure out what I really want to do I do want to add the bumper quick release I do want to mount the front mount intercooler to this bar but I'm gonna have to cut it so it's easy and and difficult at the same time, but I guess we'll see how the end product is. I'm using the factory fender brace you can see this one's a little bit but we just welded some nuts to extend it outwards put some white paint on the tip of it and it lined up perfectly right there and oh shit right there so we're just gonna drill a couple pilot holes and then this big three-quarter hole to then put this little cap in just like that So we are going to fix the exhaust because the flange came with a V-band and I had another set of a 3 inch V-band except they didn't work together so there's no inner lip to seal it. 
So we were leaking exhaust gas out the side, which you can kind of tell. So what we're gonna end up doing is cutting the flange right about here to still retain the three inch diameter and cut this down probably like right on this edge to try to get a little bit of height lost. But while we were doing that, FedEx showed up with my four core thousand horsepower rated eBay intercooler and it fits up perfectly surprisingly. So here's what we're looking like now. You can see they're both pretty flush. I have the flange as even as possible to get it straight and don't even have huge gaps to fill in. Couple bolts in the turbo, couple bolts in the header. Got the intercooler mocked up. And that's where she's gonna sit, boys. Still a little obnoxious, but a lot better than before. So I just got my intercooler mounted. I used a little bit of paint on the top of the little threaded holes, set it where I wanted to go, drill the hole. And for the bottom, I took a little piece of sheet metal and bent it just enough so there's a gap. I was scared it was gonna rub right there but we are making decent progress you just need the piping to come in and we will be mint so i just got my three inch mandrel bent exhaust pipe that is not for my exhaust it is for my intercooler piping that way i can actually weld it with no issues i have a tig welder but i've tried to tig on the aluminum piping before and it just burns a hole straight through because it is lift tig so i was trying to figure out how to go about this the best way and i've seen people do exhaust pipe intercooler piping before so i went ahead and ordered this kit and i have four of every piece but what I'm wanting to do for this side, I think it's gonna be a little bit easier, is go down through this fender hole, which I'm gonna have to cut more to get the right angle, and then kind of scoop around here over my power steering pump. I have just enough room behind the bumper to do this side, so I think this side is gonna be fairly simple. And then with this, I don't have much space unless I re-relocate my washer fluid reservoir. So I'm gonna try to come up and straight up just like that to the throttle body right there all right take this guy off and back here there's a little bit of space to cut out so i think i'm going to cut it like this and that allows it to sit significantly above the tow hook with just the wiring harness in the way and i went ahead and got started so i have a 180 then three 15 degree pie cuts a random scrap piece and then the 45 degree angle and it pairs up very nicely i may add a 90 later on if this coupler wants to give me issues And here's what I'm looking like for the other side. I'm kind of scared I'm not going to be able to take this out. But I got a little like three inch piece, two pie cuts, a straight cut. And I am going to go ahead and utilize the expansion on both sides. So this one goes into the expansion and that one goes into the expansion a little bit. Pretty gnarly. So all the welds are mostly grinded down now. I added little tacks on the end to act as like a bead roller. You can see the bulging <laughs> right where they're at to kind of help the hose clamp.
Believe it or not, I made all this intercooler piping in only like four hours. Uh, I got home from work and immediately got started. Honestly thought it was gonna take way, way longer, but somehow I knocked it out. I also got a few more things in the mail while I was working. One of them is the Haltech Flex Fuel Sensor and a Fluid Dampener Harmonic Balance. But without further ado, I think I wanna go on a short little quick test drive and kind of see if anything falls off and see where I'm standing. I can't pick it up well on camera, obviously, but I'm definitely making boost. It's like so responsive, too. Ready? I got gloss black, satin black, flat black, and very high temperature black. So I'm gonna be doing the header and the high temperature black and the intercooler and like the satin black. And I didn't wanna spend the extra money, but I keep seeing videos about this Rust-Oleum can, so I figured I'd try it out. So got everything removed and we're going to be painting it and making it not look so ugly. So we just took the exhaust manifold off and very bad signs. We have cracking right there and cracking right here and right there. It is not cracking on the welds, it is cracking on the pipe itself. Uh, so that's a little bit concerning. Um, knowing that the cars only ran maybe 30 minutes total with this header on. So this isn't looking too good for us right now. But I guess let me weld some more on it and see if we can mitigate this issue. And now we have a bunch of booger welds to kind of act as a skeleton. Probably going to grind those down to make them look better. We're just trying to ball on a budget. I have it fully bolted down and I still feel some flex. Uh, so I have some leftover Schedule 40 pipe right here that I may try to make a bracket with. We have these two threaded holes on the block right there. So I think I may connect it right to this joint in between the wastegate and the actual pipe itself to have it go down there and kind of make it a little bit sturdier. All right, so here's what we're looking like. I made the pipe go where the bottom bolt hole is and I'm using the top bolt hole to bolt it down. I got two tacks put in place right on the back of the wastegate where I think the most pressure is going to be. And she is fully back together right now, all black piping with the new brace. So I have three runs of nine foot wire and I went ahead and pulled my flex fuel sensor back through my firewall. And so I'm going to snip the plug right about here. That way I can keep the color coding the same and I'll just extend it down this frame rail up under the seat. And then I can add my flex fuel sensor right about here or so next to my fuel filter and right off of the fuel pump itself. Oh no! No going back. Oh, actually, there's plenty of going back now, but let's route this puppy. So I saw this life hack where you take a wire loom, connect the wires to a vise or something to hold it, and then you take a wrench through the wire and you're able to pull them through super easily. And it's actually working. I'm going to see if... Oh, never mind. I fucked up. Oh, don't know what I'm stepping on. You tape it. It worked perfect the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and she came out pretty good back here too. So I got the plug for the sensor. And then I have these little AN adapters for a 3.8. So this kind of fits over this guy right there. Threads on. So then I have an AN fitting. And then I have two 6 AN straights for my return line right here. So now I just got to figure out how to safely cut my fuel return line over here. We got lots of safety precautions for once. We got fire extinguisher, air blower just in case. We have a bucket of water and then I covered everything with these pig mats to hopefully prevent any fires from happening. And there's the finished product. Just kind of zip tied it up right there. Uh, I have the sensor upwards. 
because I felt like it fit best like that, but there we go. So if we go into the ECU, flex fuel composition slash temperature sensor, because the Haltech also is a fuel temperature sensor. Uh, we go to assign the wire for the signal wire, and we have three pull up, SP1, SP2, SP3. And if we go to my pre-terminated harness that I got from Wiring Specialties, not a sponsor, we can see that flex fuel goes to SP1, so click on SP1 right here. Okay. And it is now assigned. Oh yeah, we got to load the Haltech Flex Fuel Digital Haltech. So we're loading in the base map for that. And you can see fuel temperature is 84 degrees. Fuel composition is five, four to six, eight, I guess. So next on the list is now the Boost Solenoid. This is the same exact boost solenoid I was using when I had the Subaru engine in here with the turbo. It is a Mac 3 port 1 or whatever, so I have the two wires off of it. And unfortunately, the two wires for the boost solenoid, where are they at? Are right here. There is a plug on it. You can see pre-terminated boost solenoid right there. I don't have the plug to plug into this. And for some reason, they have it routed right up front. So I would like to tuck the boost solenoid. So I'm also going to have to extend just two wires this time. But they're going to be in the engine bay. I think I'm going to put the boost solenoid over here somewhere. So here are the three different boost solenoid configurations. Since I plan on going high boost, I'm going to have the vacuum go into one. Three is going to be open. Two is going to go to the top of the wastegate right here. And then this one's going to go back to the other T that I teed off of. All I got to do is wire this in, run a few more vacuum lines, and I'll be good to go. Got the laptop open back up. And once again, the termination paper boost solenoid is Depot 2. I typed in boost solenoid, so this is considered boost control. And then I have the wiring set up as Depot 2. All right, it is the next day now, and I have the coolant draining out of the radiator. That way I can take it off so I can get to the crank bolt with an impact. So I'm using a little drain valve on the bottom to cleanly drain the coolant. I usually just take the bottom hose off and make a mess, but I'm going to wait for a little bit. Just sit back and relax. So I got the front bumper thrown on there and it doesn't quite fit. So just got to do a little bit of cutting, a little bit of cutting, and then it will be mint on this too. So let me cut this off real quick. So I believe the last thing on my list before I can get tuned successfully is changing the turbo. This is a 3071 and my tuner said to get a 3582 turbo that works the best on K series because VTEC kicks in and then boost kicks in. So you get two little kicks of power at the same time. But anyways, I went ahead and pulled the Subaru out of the garage so that way we can get all this pollen off. Need to get these fenders painted soon because this is the stock eBay primer. I've seen these rust very quickly, but other than that, we can see the flake in the paint. Once again, not really good in this lighting though. Marcus is gonna come over. He wants to go for a ride. He doesn't know that it's fully running. So I'm gonna try to scare him a little bit and see if we can get his reaction. Well, I've had this 360 camera for a while. Uh, I haven't really had a chance to use it right. So I have it stuck to my inside windshield to see if we can get some cool inside and outside shot. Wow. I have a feeling it's not running bad. Is it actually running bad? She hasn't, she hasn't even ridden in it since I put the turbo on it.
So it just went on the test drive, but Marcus pulled up in a brand new fucking car. <laughs> he got a 392 Scat Pack RT SRT. Bought it last night. I can't believe he bought a Scat Pack. That is, that is absolutely bonkers to me. A magical moment has happened. He took them off. <laughs> but now, they can go... <laughs> on the subaru there we go now we're talking brother i actually need them too because i'd be scraping them see i'd be scraping my bumper i actually need these guys and i just got the last piece of the puzzle which is a 35 82 turbo it has an 11 blade billet compressor wheel on it so i think this is gonna sound gnarly all right so i got everything transferred over to the new turbo had to put my old oil drain whatever barb fitting so i could put the oil drain on and then i had to buy a two and a half to three inch instead of a two to three inch coupler because this turbo outlet's a little bit larger my old exhaust does not fit so what i'm going to do is chop it off right here and then weld this guy to it and then i can cut it off again whenever i go to put my full exhaust on because i'm not going to run this forever And after almost dying from that kickback from the miter saw, we have a quick, easy little up pipe, down pipe install. And now the turbo is fully on and ready to rip. It's a Friday night, not super late, so maybe I'll go take it for a spin. Now I got a grill put back on this thing, so hopefully people will stop thinking it's a Honda uh, because the EG hatches don't have a front grill because the hood goes down over it. So I think that's one of the main reasons they thought it was an EG hatch, other than the fact that there's a Honda engine in it that's flipped the wrong direction. Anyways, I don't know. People online aren't very attentive, I guess. <laughs>
And just like that, guys, she is pretty much done. It is crazy that I built this thing from the ground up, and we are finally at this point. Next stop is the Dino Tune, so I can finally get this thing fully finished, tuned up engine-wise, everything just like that. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, follow my TikTok, Instagram, everything under that username right there. And motherfucking...